be glad and glad each of you made it out this morning, this uh, lovely warm weekend. I'm enjoying the warm weather myself, I don't know about you guys. But uh, a couple of announcements, um, there is a, uh, some tent meetings going on happening out in Blaine Park. Um, Albert Horns actually, um, he's the one overseas, but it's going on nightly through Friday night. Now, we're not having, we normally have Bible study on Tuesday nights here, but we're actually going to be dismissing this Tuesday night. And instead, the only Wednesday night out there, Dad's going to be ministering Wednesday night. So we're dismissing here. So no Bible study Tuesday night here, but instead, we're going to go Wednesday night down to the tent meeting. And then also, I know Thursday night, Amy is going to be seen, correct? So keep those dates in mind. Next Sunday, there is no Sunday school. Um, it's the work is on Sunday, but actually what we're going to do as a reward um, to the kids, we're going to have like some bouncy stuff, bouncy houses, that kind of thing, and then also uh, we're going to have some food too. So I think Jesse's going to smoke, smoke some food. <laughs> Jesse's going to smoke. Yeah. Now, he's going to smoke some food now. He's out there, but he ain't that far out there now. But uh, he smokes some pork shoulder or something like that. And, uh, then uh, June, uh, what was it, 4th, 4th, 5th, and 6th, we're going to do uh, VBS for three days, so June 4th, 5th, and 6th. Now, we're not doing a weekend, we're actually we're going to do, uh, like I said, we're going to do actually do Sunday afternoon, we're going to do Monday evening, and then a Tuesday evening. So that way, I know, I don't know about you guys, but it seems like the weekend, especially you got kids that are doing anything. Uh, which I bet nobody can talk Sunny Katie's Saturday schedules by any means. But uh, we know that there's plenty going on. So we just want to do something a little different. You know, there's not as much going on during the week uh, as during the weekends. So remember those dates. And if you're interested in helping out and assisting with the kids, get with Jesse and Amy. Let them know, hey, you know, I'm interested in helping out. And they'll get you in there somewhere. So we, any other else? Well, I know July 3rd, we're planning on also doing a, a celebration July 3rd, which that's on Monday. It's kind of dependent upon when Louise is doing their fireworks. If they happen to do them on July 3rd, we may do something different, but right now we're planning on July 3rd. Anything else? Um, yeah, anybody interested in driving bands, kind of fill in, um, assist, uh, get with Jesse. We're just running one right now while it's going out toward the blind. <coughs> um, anything else? God is good, amen? Amen. She's safe. All right. Let's think of our tithes and offerings. Say this with me, Father, I thank you that you have blessed me. So I give, I give because I love you and want to be obedient to your word. I give willingly from the heart. I give because I want to fulfill the great commission in this world. My desire is that the good news of the gospel of Christ be preached to the entire world. I give faith. I thank you, Father, for the return of my financial seed. That is so, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody stand up. Everybody put your hands together.
God, we love you. We thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for freedom. We thank you for liberty. We thank you for clean. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for everything that it did, everything that it's doing in our lives. God, I just I thank you for freedom in this place. future holds. The best is yet to come.
You give light, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken.
be still. Behold who I am. Behold the great I am. Behold what it is that I'm able to do. So maybe in your own life you may feel like it. You may even feel like you've came to a place of hopelessness. A place just where your life to you is like it's just going to end right here. Nothing, nothing to see to place hope in. But hallelujah. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. So when we get to the end of our road, when we've done all that we know to do, hallelujah. We should be in faith. We should stay in faith. But hallelujah. Just remind ourselves that we are faith beings. Hallelujah. We are spirit beings. Hallelujah. We are faith beings. And we are covenant beings. Hallelujah. And God is going to make a way. He makes possible the impossible. Amen? Amen. You may be seated. But I'm glad that He is a miracle working God. When it seems hopeless, hallelujah, there is hopelessness is not in God's vocabulary. I can't is not in God's vocabulary. He says it's not that you can't, but you can. We can do all things through Christ, hallelujah, who strengthens us. Through Jesus Christ, His death, burial, and resurrection, hallelujah, He has empowered us. We have been given the Holy Spirit. And hallelujah, we are faith beings. And I've been saying that I've been making that confession. I am a faith being. I am a spirit being. And I'm at this morning, God Christ on my heart as they was teaching Sunday school, put in that confession, you also are a covenant being. Hallelujah. But He will never leave us nor forsake us. And God always makes a way of escape. The Bible verse says, with the temptation that Satan brings, God will always bring a way of escape. So it's not hopeless in your situation. Continue to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. There is a way. Stay in faith. Don't get in fear. Don't be fearful what you, when what you see, but stay in faith in that in God's Word which you know because He is going to bring you out of it. He is going to work a miracle in your life. Don't lose hope. Hope just is just necessary. These three remain. Faith, hope, and love. These three. The Word says the grace of these is love. But you know hope is necessary. Don't lose hope. Don't lose sight of that which you desire. But place faith. Hallelujah. Put faith in God's Word. And He will work a miracle in your life. That's what He's saying as they were singing this morning. That just came from my spirit. Be still and know that I'm God. Even though we be hard pressed, we may be shaken, we may be stirred, but we are not forsaken. And hallelujah, God is making a way in your life. God is working a miracle in your life. Let's go to Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Mark 16, 15 in the Amplified. It's actually classic. You know, there's a couple of versions of the Amplified. Um, and I kind of like, I've been going back and looking at the classic Amplified, and I, I'm enjoying what it says. But Mark 16, 15 says, And he said to them, speaking to the disciples, Go into all the world and preach and publish openly the good news. Everybody say good news. The gospel to every creature of whom of the whole human race. And then Paul speaking in Acts chapter 20 in verse 22. Acts 20, 22. Man, I tell you, that was good this morning. Wasn't that good this morning? Hallelujah. Just the anointing. I just I just enjoyed myself through it. I just had to say that. You know, I just can't put my heart of man. I tell you, it's, it's just a great day. And I just enjoyed God's presence. Hallelujah. And let's just not stop there. Let's just keep on going. Amen. Let's press through and let God minister to us. The Holy Spirit has ministered to us in song. Let him minister to you in word. Hallelujah. Let's just give back to him this morning. Paul speaking, Acts 20, 22 says, And now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. Well, that's not too positive, is it? Paul says, you know, I'm going. And the Holy Spirit told me when I go in that I'm going to be hard-pressed. I'm going to face obstacles. I'm going to face difficulties. But Paul didn't keep that from him in her end, did he? Moses noted in, in going and, and, and doing what God spoke, spoke in his heart to do and delivering his people out of captivity. He knew there was going to be challenges. He knew there was going to be obstacles and there was going to be difficulties and that there was going to be an enemy there fighting him the whole way. He knew that, but he went anyway. But Paul went anyway. He says, 24. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying the good news. Everybody say good news. Of God's grace. 
you know, in a world full of bad news, in a world full of discouragement, in a world full of hardship, in a world full of uncertainty, we have good news this morning. Amen? We have something to look forward to each and every day. Because what Jesus Christ did for us, hallelujah, the gospel, we have good news. The gospel, what is gospel? It's the teaching of revelation of Christ. The record of Jesus' life and teaching in the first four books of the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the gospel of Christ. It tells us who Christ is, what it is that Christ did for us, and what is Christ continually to do in the world today. In short, the gospel is the sum total of the same truth as God has communicated it to lost humanity as it, it is revealed in the person of His Son and the Holy Scriptures, the Bible. In the NSB, we see the gospel found 99 times. Just a little definition of what gospel is in the Greek New Testament. Gospel is the translation of the Greek noun Angeline. 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 That might not be 100% correct, but Angeline, which means good news. The verb is eugenolate. <laughs> You in Gelazo, Angelazo, 54 times, meaning to bring or announce good news. If you kind of, if I, I didn't do too good a job pronouncing that word, but you'll notice something that it sounds familiar, and it comes also from the noun Angelus, Angelus, which means messenger. What's an angel called? An angel is a messenger of God, Angelus. An evangelist is a messenger of the good news. What's the evangelist in simplicity? What does he preach? He preaches Christ, hallelujah. Christ is the good news. You see, Christ is what the world needs. Christ, hallelujah, we, we as Christians, followers of Christ, in the midst of despair and anguish, should always have good news. Now, it might not seem in your life that things are going too well, but still yet, you have good news to share. You know, Satan challenges us and wants us to shut up. Satan wants to steal our testimony. Satan wants to steal our joy. Satan wants us to be quiet and not tell the good news of the gospel of Christ. He wants us to be silent. But the central truth of the gospel is that God has provided a way of salvation for men and women through the gift of His Son to the world. He suffered as a sacrifice for sin, overcame death, and now offers a share in His trump to all who will accept Him. How many accept Jesus Christ for the Savior today? See how you get to share in that. The gospel is good news because it is a gift from God. Not something that must be earned, not something that we can do by our own works or by self-improvement. It's simply a gift of God. I don't know about you, but there's nothing that I like more than something free. Anybody here like anything free? I think we all like free stuff, don't we? You know, somebody bites your house and say, hey, man, you want to come up and hang? You might be like, you know, I'm not so sure. You know, maybe uh, when you look at my phone here, I'm going to plan to say, hey, I'm going to cook and give you, I'm going to cook some food for you. There's going to be some free food. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I, I think I do have free even at the time. I think I'll be right over there. That sounds real good. I like free stuff. I like free food. No food tastes better than free food. I don't know about that. You don't know about that? Well, I, Brent disagrees with me. Maybe Brent is just not as cheap as I am. Man, I tell you what, it's good because why? It didn't cost you nothing. Whether it's good or bad, hey, somebody offers you, would you like some free product? Well, sure. It may be the worst thing in the world, but you're going to take it and at least try it. Hey, what do you got to lose? It may be good, it may not be. It didn't cost you anything. But whoever gave you something, it cost them something, didn't it? It cost them. It cost Jesus Christ dearly. But to you and me, it's free. To the world, it's free. They just have to, you know, the word, they just have to accept it. The word says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, you, get, you give somebody something, but it's good. They're like, man, i got to have more of this. How do I get more of this? Just... Try Christ. Get a, get a little taste of His goodness. You know what? And you know they'll be cooked for eternity. You know, even crack dealers. And I, you know, we're not preaching that you should do crack or anything like that. 
crap kills. I mean, literally, it does kill. <laughs> but, you know, even drug or drug dealers, they say, man, you know, come here and get into this. You know, try to do this. Why? They want to get you hooked, and then uh, you'll, you'll, they want to repeat customers. They don't care about you. But I'm telling you, Christ is the real stuff. It's the good stuff. It'll get you so high, it'll get you out of this world. <coughs> Amen? It will, hallelujah. Because one day we're going up. It's the real deal, hallelujah. But the world is seeking for a way to get high. They're seeking for an experience out of this world. Something to take them out of this world. We have what the world needs. You know, we should be walking around high all the time. High in Christ, hallelujah. Be heavenly, be heavenly minded, but don't be so heavenly minded to know the good. But hallelujah, we should keep our mind, hallelujah, and realize that we are spirit beings and, and that our realm is not in this realm. We're out of this world. We're strangers and aliens. Ambassadors of Christ. But what Christ did for you and me this morning, it was free. Freely you have received, the Bible said also, freely give. It didn't cost you nothing. And hallelujah, don't charge nobody else for it. Give it to them freely, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15, let's go 1 Corinthians 15, start verse, chapter, verse 1. We see the Apostle Paul summarizing the most basic ingredients of the gospel message. Namely the death, burial, and resurrection and appearances of the resurrected Christ. But 1 Corinthians 15, 1, he says, Now I may want to make clear for you, brothers and sisters, the gospel that I preach to you, that you receive on which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. For I pass on to you as the first importance that I also received, that, speaking of Christ, that Christ died for our sins in accordance to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that He appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Hallelujah. That's great. Hallelujah. That's awesome what Christ has done for me and you. You see, we see four that's speaking to us what He did for us and what He has done for the world. You see, but that which He has done for you, that He has also done for the world. That which He has given to you, He wants you to take that and give that to the world. We are now the ambassadors of Christ. It's up to us by the way we live in body, by our testimony, by what we demonstrate, that's how people receive and come to the knowledge of God. It's no longer Christ's ministry to come down in His presence outside of the body, the church, and minister to the lost. Christ is the head. We are members of the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. And what? Members individually. Christ is the head. So how, do, how does the world see Christ? Through the body, which is us, the church. Romans 10.5. I never said this is going to be complicated this morning. Pretty simple message, but hallelujah, this message will stir you up. Hallelujah, to give you, to, to give you some cheer this morning, to shake you up a little bit. Romans 10.5. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is in the law. The man who does these things shall live by them. But the righteous of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will send it to heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. Or who will send the sin into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you in, the, in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For in the heart, everybody say heart. One believes in the righteousness of the mouth, confession is made into salvation. For the scripture says, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew or Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all call upon him. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's good news, isn't it? It's not nothing deeply. You know what? You, as the world, all, and what you had to do, you just simply had to believe in your heart, and you just had to make a confession with your mouth. And the word promises that whoever calls upon his name shall be saved. That reminds me of a story you've heard before. But this happened in the early 1900s um, in the Indian Reservation. There was a woman who went to the Indian Reservation. 
and she was ministering there. And there was a town drunk who was notorious for the only time coming to church was when he got drunk. And when he got drunk, he came to church, and what he would do, he would start destroying stuff. He would throw pews, he would destroy pulpits. He was just a mean, bad, ugly guy. Big guy. Matter of fact, they would have to actually bring in law enforcement from other parts of town to just subdue this man. He was just, when he got drunk, he was just so big and bad and mean. But as this woman was ministering at that, uh, at that reservation, she was preaching here in Romans chapter 10, and she was preaching for all who ever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And as she was preaching that message, that big, mean man, Indian man, came walking in the back. She said, as she was there, she said, man, she said, fear just started to grip my heart. She said, oh no, what is he going to do? But, he, but she said that man just simply went back here and said, damn it, she just continued on her message. She said, forever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. She said, about that time, that big old man stood up in the back, and she began walking down the aisle, and he went down and kneeled with the altar. Instead of everybody, you know, doing something, they said everybody was just a shock, everybody was just standing there looking, they didn't know what to do. And he eventually he came around to, to some of the other believers that were there. He said, well, hey, you know, this man has given his heart to Christ. So they began to approach him to assist. About that time, that same Indian man got up, and, and they looked at him, and they said, well, you know what, you need to get back down here and pray some more. You know, you, you've done a lot of bad things. You've lived a bad life. You, you need to pray some more. And he said, that the Indian man said, no, I don't. I don't pray. He said, you don't understand your past. You don't understand all the things. You've got a lot to repent for. He said, I'm not getting back down there. He, said, he told the believer, he said, didn't hear her preach. He said, for whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I called upon his name. I said, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. And it says, and you shall be saved. He saved me. He told those believers, you can get down there and pray if you want. But he said, I'm done. <laughs> I called upon his name. I'm saved, hallelujah. And you know, we sometimes think that we got to work out these things. We've got to work out and, and, and do everything in our own strength. But it really comes, we just have to believe what He has done. We'll try to work things out in our own strength by what we think makes sense. And then make a big mess, mess out of it. But now, the whole time, if we listen to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we know that what we need to do is to be still and let God work a miracle in a situation. That's the hardest thing to do sometimes is to do nothing. But you know what? If you're in faith, you're doing something. Sometimes it may not seem like actively in your body, but by you being in faith, if God's saying to you in this situation, you're not going to be able to work it out. Be quiet, be still, I'm going to work it out. That can be very difficult. I know it is for me. I don't know about it for you, but it is for me. Sometimes waiting upon the Lord is difficult to my flesh. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen? They shall renew their strength. They shall be strengthened. Hallelujah. But whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without preaching? How many Christians we got in the house? How many preachers we got in the house? It's amazing how my hands go down when I say that. But you know what? If you raise your hand as a Christian, you just keep it right up for a preacher. How many preachers we got in the house? You see, people have a hard time. A lot of people have a hard time raising their hand when somebody says because so many people has has said a preacher is, and they confuse that with a fivefold ministry. But we to preach is to declare. I don't care what your ministry is, so to speak, in the different gifts and callings. But if you are saved, if you are born again, you are a preacher. That doesn't mean you'll get up here and preach on Sunday mornings or stand behind a pulpit ministry. But you're preaching. You're preaching seven days a week. One minister said, put it like this, preach always and when necessary, use words. You see, by how you live your life, you're demonstrating to others who God is, who Christ is to you, and what Christ has done in your life. So what are you preaching, preachers, to the world? Sometimes I preach a good message. Sometimes not so good message. How about you? I believe you're going to be right in the boat with me. Sometimes I preach Christ, and sometimes I just preach flesh. Hallelujah. How shall 
they preach unless they are sent. We looked at that, didn't we, several weeks about how that you're anointed, how that you're called, appointed, called, anointed, and appointed. We each are sent, hallelujah. We each are anointed and called to preach. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. That's what the gospel of Christ is. Hallelujah. Behold, the angel appearing, uh, appearing. Behold, I, to the shepherd, I bring you good news. Good news. Hallelujah. Why? Because Christ, the Savior of the world, came. That is good news. Hallelujah. But they have not obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who will look for a So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. By God's Word. How are they going to know unless they hear? How are they going to hear unless somebody speaks into their lives? We are important, hallelujah. We all have a ministry to share the good news. The good news is a reality to you. Start living like it is real. And then share with others. Share, hallelujah. Matthew 5, 14 says, You are the light of the world. A city is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it in a basket, but on a lampstand. It gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You see, if you're letting your light shine, people are going to take notice to what you're doing. And what they should be seeing is what? The Word just told us. Good works. Everybody say good works. Good works. Because it's not bad works. Because the gospel of Christ is good news. Good news and good works. And by seeing your good news, by hearing your good news and seeing your good works, they are turned to glorify God. They're going to recognize God. They're going to recognize His goodness. They're, they recognize the bad that's happening in the world. They're looking for good things. They're looking for good news. They're looking for what you and I have this morning. M5 Romans 1, 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of Christ. For it is God's power working into salvation for the deliverance from eternal death to everyone who believes with a personal trust and confidence surrendered in firm reliance to the Jew first and also the Greek. For in the gospel are righteousness which God describes and revealed both spring from faith and leading to faith, disclosed to the way of faith that arouses to more faith. And it is written, The man who through faith is just and upright shall live and shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Meaning our life is to be dictated and to be ruled by faith. Faith is not only simply what you believe. Faith is also how you live. Faith is demonstrated in word. And faith is also demonstrated in action. To be a Christian in the essence means you are a faith being. And being a faith being, you're going to speak what you believe and you're going to demonstrate what you believe. Actions speak louder than words. That's why in faith we see you speaking it but also doing what you believe. Are your words and your testimony and what you're doing matching up? Are you declaring God's word? And then operating your life in fear. Are you making positive confession and then dictating your life in fear? Are you saying one thing but in your body doing something else? Well, James says that's an unstable person. And let him not think he's going to receive anything. But your faith is who you are. This good news, what Christ has done for you, what we believe, it is who we are. So speak it, share it, and then also demonstrate it. Paul determined in 1 Corinthians 2 2, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He just said, hey, Jesus Christ, this is what He did for us in His death, burial, and resurrection. That's what the world needs, hallelujah. They need that good news and how we have. So share it. Remember this week. Remember daily. You are a preacher. You are a sent one. And the world is listening to what you say and they're watching what you do. 
And you have what they need. So don't be ashamed of it. Don't be afraid to share your testimony. So many times we think, well, they'll make fun of me or they'll laugh at me. You'll find that the very ones you thought would laugh at you are the very ones who are needing that good news. So don't walk in fear. Amen. Everybody say, I'm not going to walk in fear, but I'm going to walk in faith. I'm going to demonstrate my faith in word, in an action. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand. The good news of the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. Kevin, you got one this morning. I'll tell you things you're not seeing. See with the eyes of faith. God is working. God's saying behind the scenes. I see in the Spirit, trust God with all your heart. God is moving to change his things with unseen hands. Put your hand in God's hand and you'll see changes. And the things you speak and pray by faith, God is working things out. For God's working some will. Be thankful when you don't see it. God is moving and turning things around in the unseen. God's doing a great work. Activate your faith. Step in. Keep believing what you're seeking and you'll see Time to seek God for wisdom and God, and you'll see things come together. God is putting the pieces together in God's order. God's time is perfect, and God knows the best time. Let God work, and God will show up. Give God glory, and you'll see changes. God is shining His light in new you places. God in store. Open your heart door and will, and be still and know that I'm God. There's time for doors to open and step in. When God shut doors, he see a bigger picture. Step in by faith in deeper places. In the Bible, God speak, and you'll see things come true. God will give you grace and strength and carry you in wings of mercy and wings of love. Let God be God, and you'll see changes in murder. I see the seed you sow in the spread. There's a season for the rain. I see it taking root what you planted. I see it harvest, and the season will change. Step in deep for glory. Stay humble in God's love. Be passionate with for. Expect God to manifest. Have peace and rest. All is well. This is time. I hear abundant and I see abundant life. And greater glory. Dance with glory. This is time. See as God see and agree with God. This is God's will. This is time. God will restore. So be thankful. Endure with patience, my beloved children. God is a loving Father. Give God glory. This is time, and this is God's will. And doors open bigger, and this is God's will. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord God, let's bow our hands, if you would. Anybody in prayer this morning? Anybody feeling convicted by your Holy Spirit? Let's accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Anybody just want to stay in agreement with you on prayer? Hallelujah. If you do, I'm going to give you that opportunity to come up and let us, the church, hallelujah, get in agreement with you. Anybody this morning?
And uh, Pastor Kenny Allen will be missing. Looking forward to that. Any other announcements? So size and desserts next week, uh, it's going to be barbecue pork, so, you know, whatever sounds good to you. I like dessert. So. There you go, baked beans, coleslaw, chips. Yeah. And about somebody else, you never know, maybe buy a thousand times. Buy a thousand one time. A thousand one time might be the time they decide to come. So, about somebody. Uh, come hungry. Come excited. And uh, anything else? Amen. Hallelujah. Enjoy your week. Amen.